Hello viewers, Super GT here. So the recent update in Gran Turismo added a new track, Le Mans in France, aka Penalty City. But it also added a car, this the uh, Renault Megane, or added nine cars, but the Renault Megane in Group 3 is one of them. And sorry, in Group 4, I'm, I'm lying to you, it's in Group 4. And you can see here the grid for the first race around Suzuka. We haven't done quite enough Suzuka, despite doing 198 laps on the recent live stream. So we're going to go around this famous Japanese circuit once again. So we're going to go in the Renault Megane. So it's a new car here. So judging by the way it looks with the underside there and the spoiler, plenty of downforce. So it seems to be a very grippy car. So starting way down the order in 13th but making their way up into 11th fairly quickly by the exit of turn 2 so I mean I didn't set the best qualifying that time I only had a couple of laps to do it so my qualifying wasn't absolutely on it but it does give us a chance here to try to overtake as many people as we can we've got the other Renault Megane there so that is the standard sort of Renault Megane although I just kind of squeeze that guy on the inside through the Dunlop curve get a 3 second penalty ok I mean, there was contact, and I did kind of squeeze him a little bit. So we're going to sort him behind before lunging up the inside into Degna 1 to take the uh, final top 10 position. So initial feeling so far of the car. Seems very, very grippy indeed. But uh, we're, uh, we are yet to come to the final sector of the lap as the other McGann there comes for a lunge into the hairpin. Yeah, it doesn't quite come off for him, though. So we're going to stay in 10th. Now, this is... The section where we're really going to be tested in terms of top end so a bit of a straight here coming around towards spoon curve and you see that already the McGann definitely getting a run on me but the brakes are so good on this thing it's going to be able to easily sweep around the outside into spoon curve we're going to need to uh, need to get a good exit onto this long straight before 130r and it looks like the McGann He's going to get a run on us, so I'm going to go defensive. He's going to quite easily go around the outside. So I'm going to sweep back in. So I'm definitely going to have to make the most of the car's grip and braking performance to extract the most of the lap time. And then the other cars will most likely be better on the straights. So you can see there, on the brakes, easily going around the outside, just into the back of the Dane ahead, and then just getting a three-second penalty for that, but uh, just about keeping 10th position. So we're going to sweep a little bit forwards. Once again, on the on the long main straight, long downhill straight here at Suzuka, going to lose out, and it's a similar story. Uh, the the McGann, the other McGann, very good down the straight, but then the braking performance isn't quite there. So this car definitely, it's all about the brakes, all about the handling, whereas the other McGann, all about top end speed. So you kind of got to make the most of this first sector uh, around Suzuka. Definitely the twistier part as we come into the middle of the lap sliding all over the place is the Dane ahead he is also lagging a little bit so I can't tell exactly where he is I'm trying to get the undercut through Dunlop curve don't quite get it done as I just briefly make contact with him in the rear end but uh, we both keep going just about so you think <laughs> you think I'm absolutely sick of this track after doing so many laps around it in the live stream but we find ourselves on this track I definitely wanted to try out this car. It's definitely a very interesting addition. Again, into the hairpin, I, I don't know if I made contact, if I'm honest, as uh, the Dane was lagging all over the place. I didn't get a penalty though, so I probably didn't. Spoon curve once again, sweeping out wide. And well, we've seen this in the live stream. You get sucked off. The AstroTurf loves a quick suck. And I'm off. I'm going to lose that 11th place. Oh, sorry, lose 10th place. So back into the fight on lap number three a little bit further around you can see the McGann has made some progress up ahead and I've just about just about caught back up to this group so, so now the, the Frenchman ahead is kind of going to lunge up the inside and somehow ends up off the track we'll look at that again he kind of forces his way in gets pushed onto the grass by the Dane and well and just fits for the tiniest of gaps and ends up off the circuit not quite sure exactly how that worked but uh, I think the Dane had a little bit of lag as well and that kind of worked in his favour there as the Frenchman kind of just disappeared into the gravel so that's another position that we can have for free 
without really having to earn it or fight for it. Just having a brief look behind, a bit of a space, a bit of space to tenth place. Uh, so we have breathing space behind. We can immediately fight for the guys ahead, or for the positions ahead. So then winding round towards spoon curve, a very important corner I think, and it's a difficult one to get right. Double kind of apex on the second apex of the lunge up the inside. Bit of contact, but I think I was already there. I think I was already on the inside before the contact was made and I held a fairly solid inside line. So then this is the final lap, lap four of four and well, what would you know it? I love getting sucked off so I go for number two in the race, turn one this time and lose the position back down to ninth. So not ideal. Uh, I suppose the race hasn't been too bad. I did start 13th, so you know, going up a position or going up a few positions is always better. But ultimately, the performance here could, I mean, I should be 7th really, let's face it. I think with a, without those two silly mistakes, getting sucked off is quite tempting, but it does lose you position, so it's not always the best thing to do. So you've got to avoid that around Suzuka. The AstroTurf really is tempting. And it's very easy to do around Spoon Curve and the exit of the turn two. As a Spaniard is facing the wrong way, so we actually gain a position. So that's, you know, again, another easy free position. You can see the group ahead. And I suppose this is what happens when everyone turn, turns out in exactly the same car. They're going to be fairly even on performance. And that's uh, looks like it's the case here. So just eagerly looking ahead at that group as we try to wind around the outside of the Dane into Spoon on the entry. When we've got the same car, it, um, it's unlikely I'm going to go around the outside, but I do. He kind of went really slow for some reason. So I sweep round up into 7th position. That was a solid move, although to be fair, it was mostly because the other guy just braked for no real reason. He could have easily uh, just ran me out wide. He had control of the corner, he was on the inside, but I guess he didn't really opt to make the most of it so I made the most of the situation instead up into seventh last couple of corners into the chicane just looking eagerly at those guys I still have six seconds worth of penalty yet make make that 9.5 as I just cut the chicane by the tiniest of pixels so I have to slow down here before the line <laughs> half the pack actually slowing down I don't actually slow down enough the line does come quite early and well, would you look at that, down into 10th. It was looking pretty promising on that last lap. And uh, the top 10 dominated by McGann trophies. So I suppose I gained three positions, but overall not a good result. We're going to go again. We can't be having that. But this time, I'm in the Hyundai Genesis. So I kind of wanted to take the fight to the Renault McGann in something different. And the car I've gone for is the Hyundai. So this is actually a fairly solid car. I, I, I don't think I see too many people using it, but it's uh, it's actually quite good. It's not too bad at all. Now, of course, the, the main strength, I know the strength now of the Megane, which is the braking and the handling, uh, but what it doesn't have is top end. So I, I'm definitely going to be strong in the final sector and down the main straight. So if I can get you know fairly close to someone uh, going onto a straight then I'll likely be able to get past just like the other Renault did in the previous race so we're going to kind of e uh, eagerly look at this battle ahead I don't think there's too much we can do through the first sector as you can see they just slightly have edged away uh, through this through the first sector and actually the guy behind me was flashing I don't, don't know if you quite saw that on the reflection off the back of my car so the guy behind quite eager to get past already it's all going to get a little bit kerfuffle like as we come out of Degna 2 towards the hairpin Frenchman slow German on the inside of the Spaniard I think just pushes him on slightly who almost collects the leading Frenchman and make, it, make a nice little cutback move and the German here is tr going to try to make it three wide I'm just going to hold him to the right hand side of the circuit here he's going to try and force me back I'm just going to hold it oh no sorry you, you're going to stay on the right hand side there mate thank you and I'm going to look up the inside. The Spaniard makes a good move. Uh, as, as we know, the brakes are very good on that car. So unlikely I'm going to win in a one-on-one -on -one braking duel. The best I'll have to do is try to make the most of the top end speed. So sitting in third, a good start. Up, up two positions on lap number one. Up towards 130. Oh, you can see here, this is where the speed is going to come in. 
and I think it was just too late to go for a move into 130 yards. It was always going to be risky doing that. Perhaps just tucking in behind and preserving the position is actually the better thing to do in the long run. It actually loses less time, especially if I have ambition of trying to win the race as well. So out of the final chicane, onto the main straight. So you can see the good traction from the Renault. But down the main straight, eventually the top end does come back to me. Not enough though. And as we go through turn one, ooh, it was very, very close indeed. He did run slightly wide. And I get a two second penalty. I mean, it was so close. And I mean, I must have made contact with him. It was so close though. I didn't obviously mean to. But, um, well, it turns out that I did. And I'll have to take the penalty for that. So only a two second penalty, which, you know, sometimes the penalties are fairly imbalanced because I pushed him off and he's going to lose a lot of time. And I've only got two seconds where sometimes you bump someone, they gain out of it and then you get a five second penalty, which makes no sense. But anyway, at the end of the race, keeping the penalty there and just getting rid of it before the line and finishing in second. So not a bad result. Yes, we did kill a Spaniard, but uh, he recovered to eight. So you can see here, see there, trying to um, beat as many of the, the Gans as we can. Up three positions. Now this time, starting on pole position. So this is definitely something a little bit different. Um, the race is always a little bit different when you're sort of on the back foot. in At the front, but you're on the back foot maybe in terms of defence. Um, it, it can be quite an unusual characteristic of a race as... This Czech guy just goes flying up the inside with quite a strong move, shall we say. I don't think he could have done that without the contact. And just about keeps second place. So he's in the Renault. So not an ideal start. A sub-optimal start. Obviously you want to stay in the lead as long as possible. Ideally for the whole race. But that's not going to be how this one's going to play out. We have to try and get back past him as soon as we can really. And then start building that gap. Uh, give us some safe kind of space, safe distance within, within which we can operate. So Degna 1, clipping the apex nicely, running out onto the curb before Degna 2, and just, just grazing the curb. He's gone very wide, and I'm just going to go up and nip up the inside and take back first position into the hairpin, hoping not to receive some contact. Well, actually, we do halfway through, so it's not too bad. And then this is where I should be technically quite strong although we did just look briefly behind there you can see just how close they were and that's well within uh, slipstream range so of course you do have to factor that in so you can I mean I will be kind of pulling these guys along if I have better top end and if they're right into my slipstream they're not going to be losing as much speed as they normally would uh, over my car so nice exit from Spoon and you can see the gap opening up now this is the beginning of lap number three uh, a 1.7 gap going into turn one and well we've done it again getting sucks off it just feels so good so I just went for a went for a number three you know went for the went for the triple and well gonna lose first place surrender the lead to the Czech guy with another two second gap back to third so wow it really isn't my day today I don't think this is one of those days where you can try your hardest and things are just not going to go your way. It sometimes goes like that in racing. It's not, it's not, I, I wouldn't say it's luck. Um, it's just something, some, some days things just don't go your way. And this seems to be one of those days. It's not really luck or bad luck or good luck. It's just things happen. And sometimes they happen good and sometimes they happen bad. And today they're happening bad. Into the final corner. Again, another another bad happening thing. And I can explain this one. That was a really silly error. But coming through 130i, I'm looking for the first brake board and it's disappeared. So then I see this board. Oh, that's the first one. Oh, no, it's too late. I'm looking for 150, not 100. So someone's knocked the 150 board, which I'm looking for. And what the hell is that guy doing? I don't, I don't, know, what that, well, I don't know what that was. But anyway, yeah, that, that kind of explains that silly mistake. Um... Eventually finishing second. I mean, second's a good result, but it's not a good result if you were first, were pole position, you know. I, I, I got the fastest lap as well, I think. Or I, sh I had the speed to win, basically, so I should have won. But anyway, we're going to move to the final race of the video. Hopefully, can we finally break our duck here and get a win around Suzuka? We're about to find out. Uh, down the main straight, so I've obviously got the 
the better car in terms of top end speed. So you can see here, gaining. He's gone defensive, which is more than fair enough. He's come from the inside line, and again, taking a middle kind of line. So he kind of knows that. He knows that he hasn't got the top end, so he's going to go defensive. Very good move, fair enough. He's kept his position. So from here, just kind of try to keep as close as we can. As I've said, this car isn't the absolute best through the first sector, and we've already formed a queue behind the leader as another Frenchman behind. He's looking eagerly to get, try and get past. And into Dunlop, it's just one of those annoying little moves where they just tap your rear quarter panel. And the gap wasn't there, but he kind of just forced it open. And doesn't, you know, you're not going to get a penalty for that. He's just kind of just, eh, just annoyingly kind of edged you wide in order to get through. That guy drives off, so I'm going to go back into fifth. But still disappointing. To go from second to fifth, never good. But still a long race. We can uh, definitely try to make this back up. Still have time. So this is um, daily race B. Daily race B is normally around about 8 to 10 minutes in length. And you don't need any strategy. Well, it, you don't need any strategy in terms of fuel and tyres. You might need strategy in terms of how aggressive you are and, or how defensive you are. So normally, as it's a short race, it, it tends to be more aggressive. As a, there's less time in, in which to kind of get things done. So you kind of need to get them done quickly. But anyway, onto the back straight, out of the spoon curve. I'm going to tuck into that slipstream, kind of a double slipstream here from the Spaniard and the Swiss guy. And we're definitely getting a toe here, up the inside. I'm going to go for it this time, fully alongside before we go in. I think there might have been a brief touch with the Spaniard as we go in through the apex. And into the final chicane, hitting our mark and getting hit. The Spaniard coming out of nowhere for a big revenge hit. There he is, getting reset. And well, the race has gone from bad to worse as uh, clearly the Spaniard didn't take too well to getting a bit of contact on the entry to 130R. So uh, not good stuff there. Guy behind there almost going for a move into turn one, but just about keeping it. Almost got sucked off for the fourth time in the video. Uh, I think that's far too many times in one day. I think there should be a limit for the amount of times you can get sucked off before it really does become too much. And I think there is too much now. So I really need to kind of get my act together. And you know, let's at least try and break into that top five because this has been disappointing. I haven't, I haven't won a race when I probably should. Well, that last race, I definitely should have won that. Um, that's where I had the best performance, that pole position. Um, silly mistake. It's just a silly mistake once again. So this guy is going very wide. Kind of squeeze him a little bit. And are we going to get a penalty for that? Yes. <laughs> I suppose that is a little bit, th little bit uh, aggressive on the outside. Kind of just forced my way in. But I was, I was so afraid of getting sucked off. Uh, that I kind of wanted to get off that curb ASAP and well two second penalty I'll take that rather than uh, getting pulled off by the curb into the chicane we're in position six can we improve upon that fourth place is well within sight third just around the corner the podium is possible the two Frenchmen in the lead and second uh, are long gone I think but we can try to do some damage here coming up behind the Dane or sorry the, the Swiss guy and he's kind of going to do a Max Verstappen so he's reacting to my move I move and then he moves to block me and then I moved again and then he blocked, moved again to block me so questionable defending uh, but we're going to continue anyway and try to make our way past him legitimately so coming through the first sector we're doing well here to keep up with these guys because they should be slightly pulling away through this sector where they have slightly better uh, grip and sort of direction changes so through Dunlop Curve, maximising the width on the exit and then sweeping back around. It's a long corner of this one as we come up to the deck in the corners. A brilliant circuit is Suzuka, I absolutely love it. The pole driving straight off the circuit and we're going to gain that fifth place. And look up the inside then, uh, past the Swiss guy, into the hairpin. So we've got cleanly alongside and beyond him. And into the hairpin is again another one of those moves where kind of just tip you out of the way kind of well it happened on lap one with the, with the Frenchman and now a repeat into the hairpin frustrating day what a frustrating day indeed it's really not going my way I'm going to go to the left here and once again oh man it's just one of those really frustrating moves and I kind of just gave up at this point uh, I just 
didn't really fancy racing against these kind of people. And yeah, a rage quit. A rage quit. This video isn't going to end on a positive note, uh, unfortunately. But there we go, a quick look at the new Megane, a grippy car, one that's quite hard to race against because it has so much grip and good braking performance, so it's very tricky actually to beat it. But there we go guys, I do hope you enjoyed it as always, let me know your thoughts, I shall see you next time, sub for more, smash the like button if you enjoyed, I shall see you in the next one, goodbye. Listen.